If you've got a brand new iPad, here are 10 tips to help you get started. You've already got some apps that come pre-installed, and once you've downloaded some apps from the App Store, you might want to put some into folders. So to do that, you tap and hold any app, and they all start wiggling. And to create a folder, you drag one app over the top of another. So I've got two apps here, one called Evernote, one called LiveScribe Plus, and I'm going to create a folder out of those two. So I'm going to hold my finger over Evernote, drag it over the top of LiveScribe, and that creates a folder. It immediately gives me a name um, as to what it thinks the folder should be called. And if I'm happy with that, I can accept it or I can tap that and change it. I'm just going to add productivity apps to it. To add a new app in a folder, tap and hold any app to get them all wiggling. Then I'm going to move this one into the folder. And one of the first things you also might want to do is lock your iPad into either portrait or landscape. If you don't do that, every time you turn it around, it's going to change direction. To do that, you go into the settings and into general. And down in the middle, you'll find something called use side switch to. And you need to put that on lock rotation. It's generally on mute. And what that does is that when you actually turn the side switch on, and the side switch is up near the top of your iPad, near the volume buttons, and then when it's on, it'll have a little orange dot. I'm going to turn my lock rotation off, and if you look in the middle of the screen, you can see that the padlock is open. So it's unlocked. Then when I turn it around, it's going to change into portrait mode. So every time I move it, it keeps moving. So if you want to lock that into place, turn the side switch on so the padlock is locked. Now, anytime you move your iPad, it will stay in place until you unlock it. You also might want to lock your favorite apps into the dock so that whenever you move a screen, so every time I move a home screen, the apps on the bottom don't move. And so they're the apps that I use all the time. To put them on and off the dock, again, it's the same process. Tap and hold any app till they all wiggle. And then you can drag on and off the apps that you want to keep on there. If I take off um, the iTunes store, I've now got one place. You have six places for apps. I can now drag Candy Crush onto the dock. And I could move it around in a different place. So any of the apps that I'm using all the time, folder I just did for productivity I can drag that on first of all I have to make room so to take one off I'm going to drag that folder in to take them off the dock you just tap and hold any app and to take that one off and put back the iTunes store you can also add icons to your home screen so instead of uh, making a bookmark when you come across a website in Safari or any of the other web browsers you might be using like Chrome you want to save it as an icon. So if I go into Safari and go into a, a website, and if I want to find this website again, it's much quicker if I can just tap once from a home screen and that will open Safari and open the website. To do that, you tap the sharing button and add to home screen. You can rename the website. This, this website is called iPad Learning. And its web address is that second row, technologyfield.com. I can't change that, but I can change the name. The cross on the keyboard will delete letter by letter. I'll put that back in. If I tap the cross in the actual la la heading label, that will delete it altogether. Then tap Add. Now that adds that website to your home screen. So here it is here, iPad Learning. And if I tap that, it will open Safari and go straight to that page. Double tap the home button and you open up the multitasking view. Now these are all apps that I've been using recently. So that's Safari, there's the settings, there's the rain radar, I was checking on whether it's going to rain soon. Uh, email, I was playing some Candy Crush, doing some notes in, in OneNote. And if you scroll across and any app that you've opened is still sitting there in memory. It's not taking up your memory, but it's there that you can have quick access to it. Uh, and to 
to simply close it down, you just with one finger swipe up and that closes it down completely and returns that memory. And you can do, if you want to do multiple ones, you can do, you can do a couple at a time with two fingers. Now, it's not necessary to go and shut down all your apps all the time, but that's why the way to shut down an app if it's really misbehaving and it, every time you start it, it starts in the same position, which is uh, giving you an error, then the only thing you can do is double tap the home button and swipe up to shut it down. But multitasking, the purpose is that you could be looking at one app and then you want to switch to another one. So I could be in Safari, double tap, and I want to go quickly back to uh, the settings. So I can just do it from here and tap that. Tap the settings and that switches to that app. There is a quicker way to do that and that is to do four finger swipe, left or right. So if I do a four finger swipe to the right, I can go to the other app that I was just using. And if I keep swiping, I'm just working my way through all the apps that are open. So there's the Rain Radar. This is uh, Mail. And this is Candy Crush. And if I swipe the other way, once that's loaded, I go back and forth between open apps. And that's a little bit easier than double tapping the multitasking and then selecting the app by scrolling. So if you want to take a screen capture, maybe it's a capture of uh, your latest game score or it's something that you want to be able to come back to later. So some text, a web page, uh, the settings screen. Uh, if I go into Safari and uh, go to a web, a news site and open up a story. So if you're reading that story and you actually want to keep some of the text for whatever reason, if you hold the home button and the sleep wake button and you hold them down quickly and let go, it takes a screen capture. You can see the screen flash. You'll actually hear a, a sound like a shutter going. And that's taken a capture of that screen. And if we tap the home button, go into Photos app, and the very last photo there under today is that screen capture. And if I tap that, it's now a picture. It's a photo. And I can tap the edit button and the crop button and crop some of the information out that I don't want to see. I just want to keep this text for some reason. I just want that bit, that bit, crop it out and done. And that replaces what was originally there, but that's a screen capture. The control center, if you swipe up from the very bottom of the screen, you open up the control center and there you'll find settings that you might use frequently that you can access quickly without having to find them in the settings app. So in, the, in that middle section there, you can turn on airplane mode. I think that's white is active. Uh, so Wi-Fi is on, Bluetooth is on, then you have sleep mode. You can mute your iPad in, in, uh, from, from that button as well as using the volume down button, you can mute that as well. You've got the volume controls over on the left here. You've got playback controls for any music, podcasts, TV or movies that you're watching. Brightness over on the right-hand side to affect the brightness of your screen. Uh, quick access to the camera on the bottom. The clock. Airplay, so at the moment I'm airplaying to my Mac computer, my iPad screen. So that's why that's highlighted. If I tap that, I've got all different things I can airplay to. So I'm mirroring my screen at the moment. And AirDrop is for those that have compatible devices that you can then um, send photos to and from compatible iOS devices. That's the control center. You just tap anywhere, it will disappear. Spotlight search. So if you're looking for information and you can't find it, you might be looking for an app on your iPad. And if you've got hundreds like I have and you can't find one, you can search for apps. You can search for uh, mail messages, for web pages, uh, contacts, reminders, anything at all using Spotlight search. So if you swipe in the middle of the screen, pull down, you're looking for this app called Scannable and it's on. It's on page eight of all my home screens. So if I'm up here in, in page one, uh, I've got little chance of finding that quickly. If I use Spotlight Search and delete the current search with the cross and type Scannable, 
I only have to do a few letters. There's the scannable app. Tap it. And that will open the app for you. Now it will find... We're going to settings is how you configure it into settings general spotlight search they're all the criteria you can use to search on your ipad and the ones that have the blue tick are the ones that i'm searching for on my ipad and anything that is not selected it's not going to search for so if i wanted it to search for um, podcasts i can tick it if I want to reorder what it finds, I can use these handles and move it up and down in order of importance. At the moment, the first hit is applications. If I change that to mail messages and then go back to general, home button, and search again. And let's look for, uh, I'm looking for some mail messages from somebody who sent me some email about some tips. Now, it gives you the top hit, which it thinks is the top hit. And hide the keyboard. There's the mail messages. So anything with the word tip, tips in it is appearing there. No particular order, but they all have the word tips in them. And there may be an awful lot of tips. So if you get too many hits, you've got to come go and narrow down that that spotlight search. So if I was looking for this one here, 15 productivity tips, put in productivity tips, it's now narrowed down that to four mail messages. There's no apps that have anything to do with productivity tips. So the more specific your search criteria, the more specific your results will be. So the last thing is to make sure that you have a passcode turned on. When I turn off my iPad and turn it back on, I have no security. I can swipe and I am straight back into that to the contents of that iPad, which is not secure. So you need to put a passcode on, whether that's a simple passcode of four digits or a more complex password like a uh, characters and uh, numbers and, and um, special symbols. So in settings, passcode, you've got to turn it on, turn passcode on. Put in your four-digit code twice. And now when I turn it off, turn it back on, when I slide to unlock, I've got to put in the passcode. And at its basic level, you need to have a passcode lock turned on. Uh, these three in the middle there allow access when locked. If you turn those on, then even if your iPad's locked, you'll be able to use Siri. Uh, or your notifications view in your uh, notifications panel. So that's a quick 10 tips for anyone with a new iPad just to get you going.